See, that's the thing. Many people can pull this off, but it's not more important than their career or their position or their a stature, you know, or their money. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of politicians could do this, but they may lose, they, don't, they may not get reelected, you know, because the oil money is what got them elected or some other kind of money. So what I'm saying is uh, the, the stature of this situation in Europe is at least as bad as the U.S. There might be some European countries where it isn't, but I'm also sure that in every country, Switzerland included, there are some pockets of freedom. How about um, Phoebe from Australia asks, how did how Australia live in? And everyone's saying they like the sound of the birds. Yeah, this is, this is life in an airship, folks. Uh, uh, I mean, they, I don't know, maybe saying something important. Maybe we should just stop and listen to him. Uh, but uh, in Australia, uh, we have run into uh, similar situations. Codes, regulations, local architects not wanting to drift from that, wanting to redesign the wheel. We got a project almost to happen, a client, money, a place. The architect wants to redesign it and, turn, you know, we're basically reinventing the wheel there. And it's, it's just, it, that, that's too much time and I don't want to reinvent the wheel. You know, I'm not, maybe, you know, you can say I'm arrogant or something here, go ahead. But what I'm saying is I've been down that road before we don't have time to reinvent. We try out, we demonstrate and, and use what we have, and then after it's there, the next one evolves and the next one evolves for that area. So Australia uh, is running into those same kinds of things. I do have another instance in Australia uh, after the fires there that, uh, that may pull together because they, have, they seem to have a group of people who has some political power who can possibly just declare a pocket of freedom and, and make an earthship happen. Uh, we're working toward that. And at the same time, I'm working with, uh, you know, basically have contacts that we're trying to pursue with the, um, with the indigenous people there. Out in the middle of the continent, there's no holds barred. I just need to get funding to get there. So uh, uh, Australia is definitely in our, in our workload and email every week. But we, what we do is we go through, scan through everything, and say, where can we build next? We just came out of Baja. In one month, we put up a global airship that was super cool inside and was put together in a month. We had 60 people on site. We're looking for the next place that we're going to do that. It's probably going to be up north of Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, Pocket of Freedom. Uh, so we're, we, we will take battles on. But they're back burner. All the battles for permits are back burner compared to if somebody's got the land, the money, and the pocket of freedom, we take our people, we load up another 40 interns from around the world, and we go there and we make something happen. And, uh, and kind of the concept of that, uh, Paul, our tech here, just did, if you haven't seen it yet, you should see it. He did a little YouTube blib uh, that I think they call Action Now. or it's also This is Action. Co this is Action. And it's also labeled Copenhagen uh, on the website because it starts out with talks about Copenhagen and what our experience there was and ends up with this is action. This is what we can do. And we are, you know, that's, that's what needs to happen is, is forces, armies of people every day should be building green housing, not begging and pleading for permits to do so. And we use this wood called Trex, which is made of plastic. So we can do an entire earthship with almost no wood. And that's where we're headed, because we're going back to Baja. They love the fact that we threw a building up in a month, and it's cool. Uh, so, and it has all the systems in it, power, water, and sewage. How we, the last half of the time, we were building with our own power and, and using our own water system rather than hauling water for the building. So uh, the same global model earthship design can be achieved with steel rebar, cement, and trex, which is a form of plastic wood. Um, what about uh, mold and dampness? How do you mitigate it in very humid climates? Uh, mold and dampness are issues in a greenhouse. Uh, and what you have is ventilation takes care of them. Like, for instance, if I'm here operating this Phoenix, uh, I will ventilate until the very last minute until it starts getting cold. When it starts getting cold in my greenhouse, 
then I'll stop ventilating. So I ventilate all day long, and that blows out the dampness, and it blows out the, the aspects of mold. Sometimes when I'm not here, and I've got it rented out, people don't know how to operate it and keep it uh, closed up, for instance, not knowing we, you know, we really should put a, a bigger, a better rule book out on how to operate these things. It's not rocket science, but still, there are vents and things that if you open the right ones, you create drafts and ventilation. But it's true, even in this Phoenix, if, if you close this thing up, you'll see little dots of mold starting to happen. You got to ventilate it out, you know, it, it's operation. Ventilation is the key to uh, mold and dampness. And even these cool tubes that we use, we, uh, as cold as a uh, hot air comes into these cool tubes, they're sloped away from the building. As hot air comes through them, it condenses. So in effect, these cool tubes are a subtle but somewhat effective uh, uh, dehumidifier. Okay, so Alyssa from Georgia is asking, I'd love to do an internship, but I can't afford to not work at my job for that long. How else can I contribute to the movement? You should name her because people love when they get named. Alyssa. Uh, what's her name? Alyssa. Alyssa from Georgia. Georgia is asking, uh, she can't afford, you know, we do, we have an extensive intern program where people just come here. We don't pay them, but they work with us and they learn for free and they stay for a week, they stay for a month. I would say, you know, for, you say you can't get away from your job, uh, you could for a week, you could sign up, you don't have to sign up for a month, you could take a week vacation from your job to at least, just being here and watching all this happen in a, in a, in a one week scenario, five day scenario, would be definitely educational. That's one of the things I would put in the earth to menu, is just everybody does have a week that they can get away uh, and do that. We are introducing a weekly intern program. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, as far as coming here for a month and really learning a lot, uh, yes, you, you would have a problem there. How can you start, how can you do more and get more involved? Uh, the the answer there is we of course we we've got you know we've got hundreds of interns that we can't even deal with uh, we're a small company we can't take we can't really even hardly answer the number of intern mails we get uh, but we can uh, uh, one thing we can do is projects in your area you know if you've come here for a week and learned something you're in a different level of interns then. And we can we call on different levels of interns and try to get them on a paying situation in projects near where they are. So we're this is this is definitely one of the things that we are doing is trying to um, a, trying to make something available to everybody that's interested in this. And it's a hard job. I don't have an immediate answer solution to that question except to say that you could come here for a week, and we will be having. We are getting housing for people very shortly. We've made major, major steps toward having housing so that you come here for a week and it would cost you $100 and you have housing and you have, uh, you work beside an earthship crew and you start to see, oh my God, this is possible, I can do this. So that would be the, the, the cheapest scenario and quickest, shortest scenario I could come up with. Uh, on the spur of the moment. And it's free to be an intern, correct? And it's free to be an intern. Yeah, it's like, it's the, the, the $100 is, uh, we do charge in uh, interns $100 a week if we provide housing for them. If we don't provide housing for you, it's totally free, but then the truth is you have to either camp out or spend more than $100 a week somewhere else. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we've taken the cheapest intern housing that is available around town and made something a little cheaper, yet you're on the grounds of the airships 